Reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord. Let us stand up. We're going to open up our Bibles in Second Samuel. Second Samuel, chapter nine. We're going to read a couple of verses. Second Samuel nine. Second Samuel nine verses. We're going to read first verse from verse three, and then verse three, four. Verse one, three, four, eight, and thirteen. It says the following. Second Samuel nine, verse one. Now David said, "Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake?" So now, verse three. And the king said, "Is there not still someone of the house of Saul?" To whom I may show the kindness of God. And Ziba said to the king, "There is still a son of Jonathan, who is lame, in his feet." Now, verse four. So the king said to him, "Where is he?" And Ziba said to the king, "Indeed, he is in the house of Machir." The son of Amiel in Lodebar. Now, verse five. Then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodebar. Now, verse eight. Then he bowed himself and said, "What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog?" As I. Now verse thirteen. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he had continually ate the king's table, and he was lame in both feet. Lord, we praise you, and give you honor, because you gave us um, the opportunity to come to your house and be in your presence. We ask you that. You may bless your house, and you may bless your people, and your church in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may sit down. The word of the Lord says that David he had made a pact and alliance with one of the sons of Saul, called Jonathan. And Jonathan died, but the the pact, the alliance, the covenant, it didn't die with Jonathan. The pact remained, even the, after the death of Jonathan. And David was persecuted. He persecuted by the father of Jonathan, the grandfather of Mephibosheth, called Saul. And for many occasions, he persecuted and even tried to take the life of of David. But the Bible says that David, in what he didn't fail, was a man according to the heart of the Lord. He had a great virtue. Forgive his enemies. And it's interesting that when we speak of about forgiveness, when we see uh, the Lord's Prayer, we've seen Lord's Prayer, has read, 
We notice that it's written, forgive our sins, or our sins. In the same way, we forgive our debtors. And later on, Jesus said, if you don't forgive the sins of your brother, your father will not forgive you either. Man, according to the ho God's heart, he was capable of forgiving the sins. The Bible says that he became king. Now David was king of Jerusalem, king of Judah, king of the whole Israel. It was common at that time for the kings to destroy, to kill the children of the predecessor. But David, he didn't. Uh, uh, he didn't do the same as the previous kings. His heart was according to God's heart. He had not vengeance in his heart. And the Bible says, my brethren, that when he took control of the kingdom, when he began to reign, he remembered a pact, a covenant, and an alliance that he had. And he began to, to search to find out if there was a relative of Jonathan, because he wanted to show mercy to Jonathan's uh, descendants. He wanted to be uh, good, show goodness to that person. And the Bible says, my brethren, that somebody gave a message. Somebody told David that there was a man, a relative, a, a son of Jonathan, grandson of Saul. When David asked they said, there's a, a young man, he lives uh, in a place called Lodebar, and he's in the house of Makir, and his Makir is son of Emil, and the word Lodebar means place of forgetfulness, uh, place of no worth, and it also means um, a dry field dry pasture, as a place with the, without food, a place that has been forgotten, a place that had no importance at all. And we can compare Lodebar with the world. With the world. Because if you compare Lodebar with the world, with Jerusalem and the world, and the world with the new Jerusalem, the new land, the heaven that the Lord has prepared for man, this place here is worthless. But the Bible says, my brethren, that in this place, a dry pasture, a place of forgetfulness, the Lord had prepared a place for Mephibosheth. The Lord, the, the Lord, the place that the Lord prepared for Mephibosheth was the house of Makith. And Makith means, Makir means uh, something that was sold, something that was exchanged. Makir has an important meaning for the church because when we speak about being sold and exchanged, we, are, we remember a person that is very important for us and it's the reason that we are here tonight in this meeting. It makes us remember Jesus. He was sold by three coins of silver and then even make things worse. He was exchanged by a, a criminal called Barabbas. And we can see that he was in a house of the one that was sold and exchanged. And so he was in the house of Jesus. In the world, the Lord had prepared him a house so that Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth could receive the support, 
so the Mephibosheth could be uh, fed and that Mephibosheth could recline his head. And the word Amiel means people of God. What a wonderful thing, right? So in the world, the people of God has a house to receive the one that is a needy one to receive Mephibosheth. Receive the one who thinks that he doesn't have any right. That thinks that he is not worthy of being one day in the presence of God. To be one day in the presence of the King. To be one day in Jerusalem. So when Ziba went to speak with David, he only said bad things about that person. He said he is Lodebar in the house of Maki and son of Emil. And there's another thing, he is crippled. Sometimes when you ask information about someone, You know that person? Yeah, he's in a place that very difficult. He's in a, a dry pasture. And you know, he's crippled. The Bible says, my brother and sister, that God does not see how man is. David, the king, which is the type of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in what he didn't fail he's not worried about the appearance of the person he's not worried about knowing who that person is because the covenant that he has is with with the agreement that he, ma he made and sometimes people they don't know that. They don't know that there is a pact from God for mine and for your life, for our lives. And that God, He will never let us down. We are not, uh, we are not, we are in this world, but we are not unprotected because God provided a house in order for us to be. And the church which is the house of the people of the Lord, which is the house of the Lord, which is a church that was washed, redeemed with the precious blood of the one that was sold and exchanged, which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mephibosheth, he felt like he was unworthy. When they, when they called him, he said, Me? He says, How could you have looked upon me, a um, dead dog? A dog here in the United States is well treated. If you call somebody like a dog, the person will be even feel happy. It's a compliment. If you place a name of a person on a dog and an animal, the person even feels important, right? But there in Israel, that's not, that's not what happened. If you said someone was a dog, it was the worst of all people. A person is worthless. A person is worth nothing. And a dead dog is worth even less, even worse. In Mephibosheth, he felt like that. And how many times, um, brothers and sisters, we feel like that? Despised. Humiliated forgotten. Nobody remember about us. Many times people are going through this situation. They only hear words of um, discouragement. When they mention their name, they place their name with their flaw. So Mephibosheth, I'll be here, he said. There's no place for me in Jerusalem. There's no place for me in the house of the king. I'm a dead dog. 
but my brother and sister, oh, I'm going to tell you one thing. Mephibosheth, he was a prince. You didn't know that. Saul was a king, he was a prince, and Mephibosheth was a prince as well. And the Bible said, who that comes from dust? God is the one who raised someone from dust. Raised the needy in order to make him sit down as a prince. Many times we feel like we are a dust and the garbage. I'm an imperial person. My life is in that way. I'm in a place and nobody remembers me. May nobody remember you or me. But God remembers you. God remembers me. And that's why you and I and us, we are here tonight. Because in spite of our flaws, our difficulties, our problems, I'm going to tell you more of our sins. Because all, all sin and uh, destitute of the glory of God, because the sin, the wage of sin, a death, but God gave us uh, life through the blood of Jesus. We've, we've failed, but the blood of Jesus purified us of all sin. It doesn't matter the situation in which I am tonight. What matters is that there is a call from the King to your life, to my life, to our lives. We just sang a song here that says, I want to be Lord, a redeemed. The Fibosheth, he was called in order to be, in order for David, the king, could redeem him. And what does the word redeem, redemption mean? It's to restore, to reestablish, to redeem, to deliver, to rescue and there's another word that is important is to bring it back tonight God wants to bring you back to his house God wants to redeem you God wants to rescue that's why here with us my brother and sister because God wants to use his benevolence of His grace, of His favor, of His mercy towards yours and my life and our lives. The Bible says, my brethren, as we conclude, it says that Mephibosheth is not only called in order to be in Jerusalem, Mephibosheth was not only called to be one day in the presence of the king. Mephibosheth was not called to be also in the house of the king. But Mephibosheth was called also to eat at the table of the king. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So there was a place for Mephibosheth in that place. It was in Jerusalem was in the house of the king, was in the presence of the king, and was in the table of the king, and to eat the bread of the king. My sister and my brother, you who are here tonight, as a place by our king, by our Lord Jesus, for you in this place. Mephibosheth, he left Lodebar, of the house of Emir, of the Ami, son of Lodebar, and went to inhabit in Jerusalem, in the house of the king. The Bible says to eat continually the bread at the table of the king. He was called from that place. And you and my brother and sister have been called to inhabit a new heaven, a new earth to be in eternity with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's a place prepared for you and for my, for our lives. The Bible said, my brethren, that Mephibosheth, he was in Jerusalem, and therefore, continually, he ate bread at the table of the king. And the Lord 
but you knew my brother and sister who are here the Lord is not calling you to eat bread just one day here in the house of the king at the table of the king but for you to eat bread every day you know why because when we speak about bread the Lord is saying something very important Jesus when they he picked up the bread he said this is my body God wants you to be part of his church and that you are part of the body of Christ and one day will be raptured and one day will be taken to eternity and he was eating bread continually at the table with the king he began to live all of his days in the presence of the king it's the greatest privilege that a man can receive in Mephibosheth he understood this who am I to receive all of this was not because of Mephibosheth but was because of the covenant the agreement between God be, uh, David and the family of Mephibosheth and the Lord is giving me this privilege not because of me but because of covenant an uh, alliance between God with my life if you believe in Jesus you'll be saved you are in your house you are in your family I may pass I'm, I will pass but the project of the Lord the uh, covenant of the Lord is unbroken cannot be broken and the Lord is being called lives to eat the bread at his table to live in his presence and this is the desire of the Lord towards mine and your lives and to our lives and Mephibosheth was in Jerusalem because continually he ate at the table of the king and was lame of his feet what was the problem? there was no problem I uh, have a deficiency I have a deficiency but God he accepted me he honored me he blessed me he washed me of my sins he restored me he restored what I had lost he had lost the kingdom but now God the king was giving him another uh, once again a place in the kingdom when we are born we are born in the kingdom but through our lives we lose the kingdom but the grace and mercy of our God bring us back into his presence into his kingdom into his eternity and this is the greatest demonstration of the love of God towards my life and towards our lives amen now let's sing a song
That, my brother, Lord has shown that a person, a woman, she was invited to be here tonight with us. And as she came close to the church, she felt unworthy of entering. She felt like there was something that that was trying to make her make her pre prevent her from entering to the house of the Lord but there was a persistence of the person that invited her and she entered here and why is the Lord doing this because the Lord loves you because it doesn't matter the situation in, in which you are what matters is the covenant that he has with your life which is of salvation and restoration and forgiveness and eternal life. And there is also a, another woman that entered here. She was very hungry, spiritually speaking, with a great need. And apparently, from the outside, it, everything seemed to be f very fine. But um, we could see that there was the absence of the sustenance. And the sustenance, my brother, is this, is the bread. It's the word of the Lord. Sometimes you feel the need to understand that the God is your provider, He is your helper, He is your rescue, very present in moment of anguish. And you need to understand this and feed off of this table the Lord has prepared for your life. Understand that there is a place for you in heaven, especially you. For you, my brother and sister, in eternity. The Lord has also shown a table prepared in the presence of a great king. The group arrived and great majority, this great majority felt unworthy of participating in this banquet, participating on that table. But a song was sang, and I want to be, Lord, uh, redeemed of your love. And when we sing this song, we're asking Lord to redeem us, that he forgives us, that he, can, that he might restore our fellowship with him. And those that did this were able to uh, were able to reach this fellowship, this grace of the Lord upon their lives. They were able then to participate on this banquet that was served. But there was a small group. And this small group, they thought that they understood that there was n it was not, not necessary. Any type of action from the part of the Lord in order for them to participate. And sometimes you think that salvation is, is through works. My brother and sister, it's not through works. No, nobody will be saved through works. Salvation is by grace. 
because by grace you are saved it is not some from you or from me it comes from God only the blood of Jesus is able to purify us of our sins it's not my actions and my attitudes early dawn is good fasting is good prayer at noon is good Cons consulting the word is good praise is good everything is good it's part but salvation is by grace a man is unable to justify himself sometimes they think that we are justified oh I am um, the Republican and the Pharisee the Pharisee went to the Republican and the Pharisee and uh, he Pharisee went to the front of the church and said I give tithe I do this and, and do that I am the man the publican stayed at the very end of the, the church, close to the water fountain. He's saying, Lord, have mercy on me, because I'm a sinner. Lord, have mercy on me. And the one that went home justified by the Lord's <coughs> grace is the one who asked for God's mercy. And God's mercy is a cause that we are not consumed. And it's renewed every, every morning. In anger, the Lord, the prophet, shouts Lord remember your mercy is the love of God Lord we praise you give you praise we're thankful for once again being your <coughs> your house because of your zeal your <coughs> care because the bread that we have not lacked we praise you and your door because your God is good and merciful God God has not looked upon our flaws and our sins but he has use of mercy upon us. We praise you and give you honors, glorify you, because Lord, you took us from the garbage, from the dust, from the, and Lord, you give, have given us a place in heaven in your eternity. Lord, we praise you and give you honors, also for the service, for the people that are here with us, because you know that for each one of them, you also have prepared, Amazing. Lord. A place for you in your eternity for them. Take us home in peace under your protection. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, a good and eternal Father, and consolation of the Holy Spirit to be with the God's people now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. The service has come to its end. And you, my brother and sister, who are with me, with us, if you need uh, assistance, a uh, clarification of the spiritual gift, of the word, remain where you are, raise your hand, and the brethren are here to give you the proper assistance. And I want to remind you that tomorrow we're going to have here at 10.30 in the morning, the Sunday school, and at 7.30 of night, another service, a glorification to the name of our God. And also in December, uh, we're going to have a seminar <coughs> on the weekend 15, 16, 17 those that desire uh, look for the group of assistants amen if you desire just raise your hand I have a meeting with group B